this is the question given to us. Solve the following LPT by graphical method and obtain optimal solution. Max Z is equal to 30x1 plus 40x2 subject to constraints. 3x1 plus 2x2 less than or equal to 180. x1 less than or equal to 50 and x2 less than or equal to 60. Okay, so now with this we are going to solve by graphical method. Now in graphical method, the first step is obtaining the coordinates. Now you know that every graph has two directions, x1 and x2, that we call them the axis of the graph. So first we will find in solution, step number one is coordinates of constraint lines. First constraint is 3x1 plus 2x2. Now when we find coordinates, we will assume that there is an equality because the constraint is less than or equal to. So we will assume equality. So 3x1 plus 2x2 equal to 180. Now when you want to find values of x1, assume that x2 is 0. So in that case, 3x1 will be equal to 180. So we will say therefore 180 divided by 3. So value of x1 will be 60. So this will be the first coordinate. Similarly, when you want to find value of x2, assume that x1 is 0. So we will say 2x2 is equal to 180. So 180 divided by 2. So we will get x2 equal to 90. Okay, so for the first constraints, our values of x1 and x2 are x1 is 60, x2 is 90. How did we get this? I repeat. When you want to find x1, ignore x2, assume that it is 0, so 3x1 is 180, 180 by 3, 60. Same way, want to find x2, assume x1 is 0, so 2x2 is 180, 180 by 2 is 90, so x2 is 90. Second constraint, now again, convert inequality, x1 equal to 50. Now here we get the value directly, so this is our second constraint coordinate. And third constraint coordinate, again, convert inequality, x2 equal to 60, here also we get directly, so we get coordinate values of all the constraints. Now, when we are going to plot this on the graph, we have to draw graph up to a certain scale. So, how to find the scale? So, a thumb rule for scale is how to find scale value. Select the highest value out of all coordinates, 60, 90, 50, 60. So, highest value is 90. Divide it by 10, so you get 9. Now, you you cannot take a scale of 1 is to 9. Scale has to be a round figure like 1 is to 10, 1 is to 20, 1 is to 50. So therefore we will take a scale 1 is to 10. Okay. This is a thumb rule for finding the scale, not a exact rule. Okay, but this will work. So it means now we know the scale of the graph and we are going to plot the graph to the scale of 1 is to 10. So this was step 1, finding coordinates that we have done. Now step 2, we will draw the graph. Okay, so take a graph paper and draw axis on it. So two axes, x1 and x2. Now our scale is 1 is to 10, so every centimeter will be 10 units. Okay, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. See, our highest value was how much? 90. So we need only values up to 90 only. Beyond 90, we don't need. And same on x1 axis. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So now we have plotted the numbers on the graph. Scale on the top of the graph. If this is your graph paper, on the top of the graph paper, right here, scale 1 centimeter equal to 10 units. Okay, always write scale on the graph. So now you have plotted the numbers on the graph, you have written the scale. Now, what we will do is we will give names to these coordinates. So it will be easy to identify. So let us say this is point A, this is point B, this is point C. And this is point D. Okay, now we will plot the points here on the graph. So point A is x160. So this is A. 
point A x1 60 and point B is x2 90. So this is point B x2 90. A and B they are the coordinates of first constraint line. So we will join them A and B and we will get our line representing the first constraint. So now you join this. This is the line which represents constraint number 1. Then next, second constraint there is only one point that is point number C, x1 equal to 50. So this is x1 equal to 50, so this is point number C, x1 50. Now when there is a single, single point or a single coordinate, the line will be a parallel line. So now this line will go like this, it will be a parallel line. Third constraint, x2 equal to 60 coordinate is that is D. So x2 equal to 60, this is point D. Again single coordinate, so it will be a parallel line. So this line will go like this. Okay. You should always remember that if we have three constraints, we should have three lines on the graph. So we had three constraints, so now we have three lines on the graph. And now for every constraint, you write the equation of that. Okay, or for every line, you write the equation, original equation of the constraint. Now this was line, this is line AB. So here we write equation. The original equation is 3x1 plus 2x2 less than or equal to 180. Then the second constraint, point C. This is point C and the equation is, equation here is x1 less than 50, less than or equal to 50. Third constraint, this is line D and the equation is x2 less than or equal to 60. Okay, so always write the equations of the graph. Okay, now three more points are there, 1, 2, 3, so you can give name to it, let us say it is EFG. So let this be EFG. Okay, now this is now our graph is complete. Now the next step is to find the region of solution. So where exactly is our solution on the graph? Okay, and this is the origin of the graph, so you can give it name O, O for origin. And the origin coordinates are always 0, 0. Okay, fine. Now the next step is, step 3 is find the feasible region. That is called feasible region of solution. It means where exactly is our solution on the graph. And the rule for finding this solution is if the constraint is a less than or equal to constraint, the region should be inside, inside the line. Okay? And if the constraint is a greater than or equal to constraint, the region will be outside the line. So now what we will do is we will select one line at a time and we will eliminate those areas which are not a part of physical region. So we start from line AB. We start from point A. Now since this constraint is a less than or equal to constraint, it means the region has to be inside the line. Okay. So now this is our conclusion that the region is inside the line. Now we start eliminating what is not possible. Now start from here, from A to G, the region is inside, so all the outside part you cancel with pencil, so it is not possible, this cannot be the region. Now you come from G to E, again the region is inside, so this triangle is not possible, so you cancel it. Then you come from E to B, okay, last part, again the region is inside, so this part is not possible, so you cancel it. Okay, so now line 1 is O, now we will do for same procedure for line number 2 that is C part okay line C coordinate C here again the sign is less than so region has to be inside the line okay so now start from here from C to G since the region is inside this small triangle cannot be solution then when come from G to F again inside this part is already cancelled now you come go above F, the region is inside, so again this part cannot be possible. So this is not our region. Okay. Now the last line that is remaining is line number 3, that is the line from D, starting from D. So now again D, 
the sign of the line, sign of the constraint is x2 less than equal to 60. So less, less than means region has to be inside. Okay, so inside of this line. So again, what is not possible, we will cancel. So we start from D, from D to E, it is inside the line. So this triangle is not possible, so it is cancelled. Then below E, so this is cancelled, already cancelled. And below this also, so this is already cancelled. So when you do all cancellations, whatever remains in the end, that is our region. Now you can see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all these parts are cancelled. So what remains is only this part. It means this is our region of solution. So this is what we call feasible region. So now on the graph paper you write feasible region Feasible region, it starts from O, O, then it goes to D, O, D, E, G, C. So our region is O, O, D, then E, E, then G, and then C. This is our region of solution. Okay, so this is how we find the region. So this principle is very important. You should always remember this when you are finding the feasible region. If the constant line sign is less than, the region will be inside. If the constant line sign is greater than, the region will go outside. Okay. So now, step 3 was finding the feasible region. Now we go to step 4. Now we want to find the solution. And for that, we use a method called corner point method. So now these are the corners of this feasible region. O, D, E, G and C are the corners of the feasible region. And our optimal solution will be either at any of these corners. So that we want to find out. So now for this we will find corner points method. Vertex means corner. Okay, so now start from first corner that is O. At O, the values of coordinates are 0, 0. So x1 is 0 and x2 is also 0. Now this is our objective function, original from the question. And now we will substitute the values of x1 and x2 in the objective function and we will get the value of z. So here for O, since x1 is 0, x2 is 0, so 30 into 0 is 0 and 40 into 0 is 0, so the at origin the value of z is 0 because there is no production, no production means no profit. Okay, from O we go in D, at D, D is on the axis, so at D x1 is 0, but the value of x2 is 60, so x2 is 60. Now we substitute in objective function 30 x1, 30 into 0, 0 and 40 into 60, 6 into 4 is 24 and 2 zeros, so 2400. So at D, the value of Z is 2400. From D, you go in E. Now E, if you do the projection on the graph, if you see here, the projection on the graph, the value of x1 for E will be 20. So at E x1 is 20 and at E, E is on this line where x2 is 60. So x2 is 60. So now you substitute this in the objective function. 30 x1, 30 into 20, 3 into 2, 6 and 2 zeros, 600 and 40 into 60, x2, 40 x2. So 40 into 60, so that is 2400. So at here, at this point the value of z is 3000. The next coordinate is G. So the next corner point is G. Now at G, G is on this line where x1 is 50. And x2, if you do projection of G here on this axis here, 
So it will be at between 10 and 20, it will be midpoint of 10, 20, you will see on the graph paper. And it is 15. Okay, so the value of G here, you will find that here it is 15. Now substitute this in Z. 30 into 50, 30 x1. So 3 into 5, 5 into 3 is 15 and 2 zeros, 1500. Plus 40 into 15, 15 into 4 is 60, so 600. So 2100. And the last coordinate is the last former point of visible region is C. So C. C, x1 is 50. And C is on the horizontal axis, so coordinate value of x2 is 0. Now substitute this 30 x1, 30 into 50, that is 1500 plus 40 x2, but x2 is 0, so 40 into 0 is 0, so 1500. So this gives us the value of z at each of the corner points. So this is called corner point method. Okay, now our solution is one of at one of these. How to identify the solution? Our objective function is max z. So we need the highest or maximum answer. Now if you compare 2400, 3000. So the highest value of z is 3000. It means our maximum profit is 3000 which is at point E. So this is our optimal solution and these are the values of x1 and x2. So now we can write our final answer. So below this you can write optimal solution. x1 equal to 20 units. x2 is equal to 60 units. and max z is 3000. This is our final answer. This is how we solve graphical question.